Hi, Mr. Mr. Washington here. We're going to talk about factoring out the greatest common factor called the GCF of a polynomial today. We're going to accomplish that with some upside down division. Uh, so let's see what it looks like. Uh, we're going to write the polynomial under the upside down division sign. We typically work down the page. That's why we want to do that. Uh, we want to find a number that divides evenly into each coefficient and each constant. So 18, 15, and 3 are the coefficients and 6 is the constant. What number can we divide evenly into those? And it looks like we can divide uh, 3 into those 3, so we're going to divide those by 3. 18 divided by 3 is 6y squared. Negative 15y uh, to the third divided by 3 would be negative 5y to the third. And 3y divided by 3 would just be 3. And negative 6 divided by 3 would be negative 2. We then look to see if we can divide the variables, if any of the variables have a common variable. So we kind of ask ourselves, does each term have at least a y? And we see here that's not the case because negative 6 does not have a y term or a, or a variable there. So we can't divide by any more variables. So the GCF is found on the outside of the division sign. So the 3 here uh, would be our GCF. And we're going to place parentheses around the terms at the bottom of the division sign. And our GCF always goes outside the parentheses. So our final answer, 18y squared minus 15y to the third plus 3y minus 6 is equal to 3 times 6y squared plus 5y to the third plus y minus 2. We have a more difficult problem here. We want to look at the numbers 82, 16, and 8. Uh, you might think that we could divide those by 8 because 8 and 16 are both divisible by 8, but then we checked 82 and it's, it's not divisible by 8, so then maybe we try 4. Uh, 8 and 16 are both divisible by 4, but 82 is not divisible by 4 either. Uh, so we can divide those by 2. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to divide those by 2. 82 divided by 2 is 41. All the variables and exponents stay the same because we didn't change those yet. Um, we could have did this all in one step uh, if we wanted to, but it uh, looks like we're just going to break this down into multiple steps. 16 divided by 2 is 8, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. Again, the variables and exponents stayed the same that time. And then we look at the uh, variables. What can we divide each of these uh, terms by? We look at the x's. Does every term have at least an x to the first power? That answer is yes. So then we say, does every term have at least an x to the second power? And that answer is yes. We see an x to the fourth, x to the third, and an x to the second. Does every term have at least x to the third? And that answer is no. So the, uh, the biggest we can divide by, uh, the x's, would be x squared. So we're going to divide all these by x squared. When we divide exponents, uh, we subtract the exponents. When we divide variables... Uh, so 4 minus 2 is 2. That's how we ended up with uh, 4 minus 2 is 2. And then 3 minus 2 would be x to the first. And 2 minus 2 would technically be x to the 0, uh, which is equal to 1. And then that goes away. Again, we could have done this all in one big step uh, if we could look at it that way. Uh, but for some of us, we just need to break it down into several different steps. Uh, so now we're going to look at y. Uh, we're going to divide by y squared because the biggest number of y's that each term has is y squared. Uh, so y squared divided by y squared, the y goes away. y to the seventh divided by y squared is y to the fifth. And y to the ninth divided by y squared is y to the seventh. And now we're going to divide everything by z to the second power because that's the biggest number of z's that they all have in common. This one has a z squared, a z to the third, and a z to the eleventh. So z squared is the, uh, the biggest number that they all have, and we divide that. z to the third divided by z squared is z. z to the eleventh divided by z squared is z to the ninth. And z squared divided by z squared, that goes away because it cancels out. Our GCF would be all of these things on the outside multiplied together. Again, if you can do that at one time, we could have did this in one step. That would have been fine. Uh, totally up to you if you want to do it in one step or if it's going to take you multiple steps. So now we would write our answer. The GCF goes outside our parentheses. So our original expression is equal to 2x squared, y squared, z squared, times 41x squared, z, 
minus 8xy to the 5th, z to the 9th, plus 4y to the 7th. And what we've done here, when we talk about factoring, we really talk about this idea of undistributing or unmultiplying. And in this case, we have unmultiplied our original expression, and we can't unmultiply that any more than it's already been multiplied. Therefore, we have factored the greatest common factor out of our expression that we started with.